Hi everyone, this is the much awaited last tutorial I was promising and as I said in the forum, or well, not in the forum, in Facebook, I'll be dividing it into three parts to cover three different ways you can make glass and well, this is just one of them. So let's get started. First of all, we will be needing a backdrop and I'll be using this picture as a backdrop not a very beautiful picture but it's a picture I took some years ago and it has lots of grass and that's the main selling point for this backdrop okay one thing we need to know is its resolution either when you're opening the image with Irfan view for example you can see here its resolution or if you're in Windows and in a Mac it must be something quite similar you just put your mouse on top without clicking and some properties pop up which are as you can see the resolution so getting back to shade we must add that. And to do that, we go to the image window, edit image, load. I'm already on that folder, and here we have it. You could use import to scene or external reference. It depends on how you work. I usually prefer external reference. It makes file saving not as big as it used to be. But if you're sharing this with others, import to scene would make some sense as you wouldn't have to make a copy of folder with all the assets, etc. But I'll use external reference in this case. Okay, open. Here you go. And basically, we must copy these numbers here to custom settings. So that would be. And why is that? That's because it's a backdrop. We must actually click it. Well, let me not click it here. I'll model what's supposed to be a very simplistic house. And how do I go there? I clicked on the box. There you go, and we'll make a roof. Oh, no, that would be the top, so let's be here. Okay, there you have it. We have a house. Now, and I'm only guesstimating, the house should be more or less over there. And we want to see the background over here. Now, usually, we go into background and you say we'd add the image here. However, if we add the image here and you can see here an image, you need a spherical or a probe light or something like that to have a nice background if you add it here. However, if it's only a still image, the correct way to put it, or rather where you should put it, is there when we added the backdrop. And let me demonstrate. Okay, preview rendering. Nothing fancy. And we'll add the image here. Okay, that's the only image. So and first you see this because it's applying it as a plane on this direction and on this direction that is on the top and the bottom and as you see we have planner which is that one spherical which is not what we want 
that would be for something like this but we don't want that a cube map which we don't want and a vertical cross which we don't want so we don't want this and so we'll get rid of this no okay back to where we were if we do that view image window backdrop we'll get it there and you'll say there is our grass well not entirely first of all I know this doesn't look real but it also doesn't look real because it doesn't have any shadows and because the light is coming from the wrong way the sun should be approximately around here so we should go into the light and I don't usually use ambient and let's put a ground there to see our shadows all the ground shadows actually and as you can see we must make this quite bigger scale and shadows are not coming on this same direction so what about here and here it's something of a game of mix and match I'll cheat a bit so as you see it must come from this side and it's almost like this now we're turning that view somewhere along this line now this shadow doesn't just doesn't look realistic because it's it's projected onto this plane. We want it to simulate it being projected to the grass. So and in order to make this more realistic, first where we meet will actually be disabling this and using the wonderful sun. physical sky enable and of course path tracing global illumination now that would mean that the sun is the light is being controlled as the sun and the sun is no longer then controlled by this or the light rather the shadow is too harsh so it should be somewhere around here and I believe that was taken by late afternoon so it should be around maybe 16 no push on maybe something like that and now we'll cheat because we'll tell it or oh, you can live in Tokyo, of course. And if you drag this over here, you have this slider, which you can see is changing the compass. So I want that big right area coming from more or less the same side as we had on there so you can of course do this to death but I'm satisfied as how this looks right now so for this to be 
now in shadow we should click here on the browser window on this small triangle and look for this shadow catcher if you cannot see that and you might not as you see it's the same right click and simply choose it from there so it will appear so we have shadow catcher there's something else we need to do we may need to put the ground with a neutral draw gray something like this maybe it's too bright okay let me do that and now in image window we would put don't render the background because our background will be our backdrop and enable the backdrop and of course we can tweak it a little bit more but this is almost ready what we need to do now is the shadows coming here and maybe on you can see there are blurred shadows but the shadows are not completely flat they have a little bit of uh, jaggedy edges we need to do that here first the softness is controlled here so with some softness uh, again you should experiment what works best for your photo backdrop but now with a surface we need to add a bump map to this so it gets displayed i already have this glass shader and i'll explain it in a little bit more detail in another tutorial but basically if i add this it might be a little bit hard to see but it's getting jaggedy let's that and of course the projection is wrong but if we put a box let's just as you see it has several things but the main thing is that in the bump we are changing this parallax bump to go G3 up and down that's what we want for our shadows so again click on this and there you have it that's first grass technique tutorial for shade thank you